Chapter 6 Before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running, scattering tears and snot all around. While I was running, I wrote my memories down in my notebook. But I quickly forgot why I was even running. I slowed my pace and looked down at the unfinished memory in the notebook. When I did, that recent memory was resurrected in my brain and... Kya! Screaming, I continued fervently dashing away from the central plaza. I climbed over the iron fence like a daredevil, and after running away some more, I finally saw the school dormitory ahead of me. I flew into the dorms at top speed and headed straight to Matsuda's room. As far as I'm concerned, when faced with times like this, the only person I can remember, the only person I can rely on, is Matsuda. As I ran through the corridors, flipping through my notebook in search of Matsuda's room, I recalled another memory that was written down in it. I am not allowed to visit Matsuda in his room without a good reason. But I did have a good reason right now. It was an unprecedented state of emergency, and so I ignored the precaution. After flipping through the notebook some more, I finally remembered where Matsuda's room is, and managed to reach it before I forgot again. Bang 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 bang! As soon as I reached the door, I knocked on it with all my strength and screamed. M Matsuda! I I it's terrible! Terrible! But no matter how long I waited, the door didn't show any sign it was going to open. M Matsuda! Come on, Matsuda! I continued my insistent knocking. I knocked as if I was deranged, as if I was half crazed. I knocked and knocked and knocked, and after I continued knocking for a while, a door finally opened. Honestly, who is this? But the door that opened was the door to the room next door. Wait, huh? It was strange. There was no one there. The door was open, and I even heard a person's voice, but no one was there. Hey, what's going on? You're being very noisy. Someone's voice could be heard in the corridor that still looked empty. Even more surprisingly, it was a kid's voice. I looked around once more, but there was still no one there. Hey, big sis, where are you looking? I'm right here. Wh where are you? I turned to face the empty hallway and yelled, Wh where are you hiding? Once again, I could only hear a voice. <laughs> I'm not hiding anywhere. I'm right here in front of your eyes. You just haven't noticed me yet. In front of my eyes? I took a big breath and waited for my palpitations, which now became violent, to calm down. Then, I properly concentrated on the environment. When I did, I finally noticed him. Oh, did you finally notice me? In front of my eyes stood a boy that looked like a cartoon Cupid. Ah, uh, don't worry. I was born with a weak sense of presence. No one notices me at first. I'm used to it by now, so don't let it bother you. The boy had the clean voice of someone yet to reach puberty. His face was surprisingly featureless. It was the kind of face that you'd draw if told to draw a child's face without using a photo as reference. Its complete lack of distinguishing features was an astounding distinguishing feature all by itself. So, what's wrong? Eh? What's wrong about what? Hey, hey, when you're assaulting someone's door in the middle of the night, you can't go asking about what. At this time of night, even insomniacs doze off. He held a paper bag crammed with sweet pastries in his hand, fit for the unending appetite of someone still in his growth period. A logo reading Hansel and Gretel was printed on it. It must be the bakery's name. He took a pastry out of the bag, crammed it in his mouth, and said, What's wrong? Eh? Can you repeat that? The boy swallowed the pastry he'd been chewing and repeated, Well, what's wrong? How about you tell me about it? I may be able to help. As he spoke these powerful words, the boy looked me over as if appraising me. His eyes especially lingered on my chest and my legs. Um, before that, I have one question of my own. What is such a young boy doing here? Are you visiting your brother or your sister here at the school? My name is Yuta Kamashiro and I'm a student in Hope's Peak Academy's 77th class. Pleased to meet ya. Huh? I may not look like one, but I am a high school student. Oh my. Don't worry, I already have hair growing in all the right places. Oh, oh my. Don't just stand there forever with that surprised look on your face. I introduced myself, so can you at least tell me your name, big sis? 
Sh sure um... I spread my notebook's front page in front of the boy's eyes. Huh. That's a strange way to introduce oneself, opined the boy from the other side of the notebook. Hmm. Yoko Odanashi. Not a bad name if I may say so myself. If I were you, I would look forward for chances to introduce myself. He smiled an innocent smile. When all is said and done, I couldn't see anything but an elementary school student. Well then. Suddenly, his expression matured. So what kind of trouble have you got yourself involved in? His eyes glittered with curiosity. No, they glared. And it wasn't just curiosity. They radiated something much more greedy, much more calculating, much more insane. Your state of confusion means it's fairly major trouble, isn't it? Staring at me with eyes filled with enthusiasm that didn't fit the rest of his youthful features, he thrusted his hand into the paper bag once again and chose another pastry. Yay! Ebisu Pumpkin Melon Pan! His face was covered with an innocent wide grin once again as he happily pushed the new pastry into his mouth. Well, so what is it? What kind of trouble? Um, I wouldn't call it trouble exactly, it's just that... I have something to discuss with Matsuda who lives in this room over here. Um, I didn't quite get that. Kamashiro gulped the pastry down. Yasuke Matsuda isn't home right now. Isn't home? Yep, he isn't home. What? My sudden scream reverberated through the dorm's empty corridor. That's bad! Bad, bad! Why isn't he home when such important things are going on? You may yell, but that still won't make him be home. I was in a panic, but Kamashiro just calmly continued chewing on his pastry. His neuroticism is very well known among his classmates in the 77th class. There's no way he wouldn't notice someone knocking that hard on his door. I could even hear it from right next door. Enough to make me come out and see what was going on. B but why isn't he home? Where is he? Maybe he's still in his lab? He's always working late into the night. Got it. His lab. I turned around and started to run. Hey, wait! But Kamashiro stopped me. Don't tell me you actually plan to go there. Did you forget? At this time of night, the East Corridor is blocked with an iron fence and security sensors. I don't think you can enter. Eh? I can't? In other words, I can't get Matsuda to save me? That can't be. I was at my wit's end. That's bad. What am I going to do? This is the biggest crisis in my entire personal history. Why don't you let me help you then? Kamashiro faced me, his face brimming. I can't leave a troubled woman with such a cute face as yours alone. So what have you gotten yourself involved with? Tell me everything. What have I gotten myself into? That's... Uh-huh. I mean, that's... Um, what was that? It seems that while I was at my wit's end, I'd forgotten what I was at my wit's end for. Um, wait just one moment. I hurried up and checked my notebook. <laughs> you really don't have to hide anything. If you weren't in great trouble, you wouldn't be smashing that door like you did. You acted just like Kindaichi in that manga where he comes across a dead body. Coming across a dead body? Just about the same time Kamashiro said those words, I found the same phrase in my notebook. In a second, my spirit was crushed and suffocated, and I stopped breathing. Hey, what's wrong? Your face is as white as if you're in an episode of Kaiki Daisakusen. I was still in shock from my resurrected memory of finding a body, and I couldn't breathe. In order to escape from being suffocated, I whispered one sentence to myself. This has nothing to do with me. I repeated it again and again. Nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. For me, they were magical words. Each time I whispered them, the world slowed down a little. Truly magical words. That's right. Nothing to do with me. After repeating the magic words a few more times, I finally managed to calm down. I was just about to close my notebook so I could really forget once and for all what had happened, when my eyes discovered the next memory written in it. There was a Ryoko Odanashi memory notebook lying on the ground under the body. 
I raised my voice in a scream like I never had before. Ah! I forgot! That notebook, inside that muddy pool! Even if I convince myself this has nothing to do with me, if they find a notebook with my name on it, it would be impossible to convince anyone else. I'm gonna be pulled into a stage, surrounded by extras. They're gonna expose me in front of a faceless audience and hand me down some cruel punishment. This is bad. My palpitations became violent again. B -b 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 what should I do? Everything was breaking down. The world itself was breaking down, starting at my feet. I have to do something about that notebook before it completely collapses. Spurred by that sense of urgency, I took off at full speed. Hey, big sis, wait! A voice called from behind my back. If you're in trouble, please let me help. If you want to help, tell Matsuda to look for me when he comes back. Bye bye I yelled without looking back. Then, I ran past the corridor and out of the dorms. I ran all the way through the south corridor without stopping to catch my breath and climbed over the iron fence with that same momentum. I proceeded at full speed into the central plaza, still covered by darkness. I ran so fast I didn't even notice my breath was running out. Finally, I reached the fountain once more. I reached it, but... Huh? The scene that spread in front of my eyes was... discomforting. I looked around several times. Yep, this sure is discomforting. I opened my notebook to check my memories again. The one thing I can't trust is my own brain, so when faced with such a discomforting scene, my first thought is to doubt myself, but I came across an old man's dead body near the fountain in the central plaza. That memory, properly written down in my notebook, convinced me it was not me who was at fault. No, the cause of this discomforting feeling was the scene in front of my eyes, the scene that was lacking a dead body. It was strange to find a body here, and now it's strange not to find one. Strangeness upon strangeness. It was unbelievably strange. Was he really alive? Did the dead body walk away? I didn't understand what was going on, so I looked around some more. Soon, I found something near the root of a nearby tree. It was a notebook. On its front page was written, Ryoko Otanashi's memory notebook. Wait, huh? Why is my notebook here? Then, as I considered that question and was about to go and pick the notebook up, da 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 da! I turned around, my body shivering. There was a girl standing behind me. <laughs> so we finally reached this event scene. She was striking a pose, her arms folded in front of her body, a girl about my age. She had flashy makeup on, as if she jumped straight out of the pages of a fashion magazine. Her blonde hair bulged in large, soft puffs. Her stylishly torn up top had a stupidly large cleavage, and her embarrassingly short skirt revealed long, slender white legs. On first look, she seemed like a normal cute girl. Her eyes alone were a million light years divorced from normal. Those deep, dark eyes were like a bottomless swamp, and it almost seemed even the darkness of the night could easily be swallowed inside them. The moment I saw those eyes, danger signals started flashing violently inside my brain. Each fiber in my body screamed at me to just run away, but at the same time, I was captured by the despair-inducing idea that resistance was futile. In the end, I just stood there, transfixed, unable to move. Oh? Why are you ignoring me? Or maybe your default mode is being one of those mute characters. She had a smile on her face but it was the wicked smile of a warrior looking down on a foolish weakling before they crushed them. Ah! Oh, I got it! She suddenly raised her voice and thrust her index finger straight at my forehead. I know what you're thinking. I know what you've been thinking ever since you saw me with my arms crossed. You've been thinking, you know, I haven't crossed my arms in a while. It must be my voluptuous bosom that's keeping me from it. How rude. Women who boast their boobs like that are the worst. By the way, did you know the current world obsession with boobs is nothing more than illusion born out of no good games and anime and variety shows? That's so gross! Totally gross! Do you even know what kind of guys are obsessed with boobs? I'll tell you. You know those airhead girls who get pampered in their hometowns and then go out to the big city where they're not popular anymore so they end up taking off their clothes for whoever gives them the time of day? There are those virgin guys obsessed with that kind of girl who are also not the brightest bulbs in the shed and only have their impressive lower bodies going on for them. 
there, though, one's endlessly obsessed with boobs. Changing the subject for a second, our virgin's the worst. If it wasn't for the virgin megastores, there would be nothing good about them at all. Even then, that chain got shut down by the economy, and yet, it's still a million times better than actual virgins! Um, what was I talking about? Oh, that's right, the economy. We should start with the government policy. Hey, wait a second. Ouch! She was obviously saying far too much for someone making their first appearance, so I tried to stop her, but she just pushed her finger even deeper into my forehead, making my efforts ineffective. Wait, now I remember. We were talking about boob obsession. You know, I hate being pushy, but you should really drop that boob obsession of yours. Drop chaise set obsession, if you prefer en français. If you don't drop it, you're gonna get in trouble when you're older. Do you get it? The larger they are, the more they sag. Or maybe you're one of them. Do you think you can win against the forces of gravity? Do you have superpowers? Should I expect Magneto to come scouting for you? I said, wait a sec. I tried being insistent, but this time, she thrust her finger straight into my mouth, making my efforts ineffective once more. Firenzio, por favor. Wait, that's not it. What was it that you say when you want someone to be quiet? Ah, uh, whatever. In any case, shut up and don't interfere. I really love talking, you see? You should act like a good mute girl and just stay silent. It's my turn now. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying at all! Saliva started flowing out of my mouth, running through her finger and dropping in a thin thread into the ground. She didn't seem to mind at all though, and instead said, by the way, what's your name, mute girl? <laughs> hey, hey. She tilted her head, looking displeased. Don't mumble. Say your name properly. If you don't answer within three seconds, I'm going to follow the three-second rule and pull your tongue out. She wasn't even done talking before she grabbed my tongue with her fingers. She had tremendous strength, and my tongue was held firmly in place as if gripped with a vice. Right. One? She started the countdown. Wait. This isn't a joke? Every pore in my body suddenly opened, making me sweat profusely. Wait, if my tongue is held down, I can't speak! Two! Suddenly, I noticed the notebook I held in my hand. I pushed it out in front of her eyes with great excitement. Hmm, Ryoko Odanashi, is it? But I'm very sorry! She opened her mouth widely and flashed a demonic smile at me. I told you to say your name. I never said anything about showing it to me. Huh? Right then, your three seconds are over, so I'll be taking your tongue now. Huh? Huh? I tried resisting with every bit of strength left in my body, but her nails cruelly wedged into my tongue. Inside my mouth, the irony taste of blood mixed with that of my saliva and rapidly drained away my fighting spirit. Her eyes, transfixed on mine, were overflowing with dark despair that seemed to squeeze what hope I had left straight out of me. At that moment, I finally came to accept that resistance was useless. The last of my strength left my body, and my notebook slipped away from my hand. I let my body hang, and abandoned hope. <laughs> Suddenly, I heard a laughing voice. <laughs> with an ecstatic expression on her face, her cheeks painted red. She laughed a bizarre, mad, overwhelming laugh. <laughs> when that merciless, savage roar of a laugh came to a stop, she finally removed her fingers from my mouth. <coughs> I coughed madly, spit mixed with blood spewing out of my mouth. Haha, <laughs> lol. Super awesome! By the way, who'd ever want your tongue anyway? What do you think I am? Some kind of savage? <coughs> I bet you're wondering why I do such an odd thing, don't you? Well, the answer simply, I really wanted to see your face full of despair. You see, for me, this is the best kind of introduction you can give. I was still leaning forward, gasping for breath. She wiped her saliva-drenched hands on my back and continued talking. By the way, I haven't introduced myself yet, have I? I became even more nervous. I had a bad feeling about this. A very bad feeling. My intuition was telling me to stay far away from this girl, but she didn't stop. Instead, she proudly announced her name. My name is Laputa Tenjuko. 
Laputa Tenku. Just kidding. It's a joke, you see. A joke. Is this really the time for jokes? Ah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, is this really the time for jokes, aren't you? It was like she could read my mind. Jokes are amazing, aren't they? It was Hirobumi Ito who said, only a man who has a sense of humor can live in this world without growing mad, you know? No, that was a lie. Hirobumi never said that. I couldn't think how to reply to that. Instead, I just waited for her to finally tell me her name. For real this time. My name is Junko Enoshima. Under the guise of super high school level fashion girl, I'm sometimes a charismatic amateur model for fashion magazines. At other times, I'm a charismatic... Oh, oh, oh. But that's still a secret. I'm sorry. She stood in the light of the street lamp, stretching her figure like an actress under the spotlight. Junko Anashima. My brain understood that I shouldn't get involved with her, but my body acted on its own. Before I knew it, I picked up my notebook and wrote her name in it. Oh, and what's that you're doing? Anashima asked with a curious look on her face. Uh, um, that's... I hesitated, not sure what I should say. Oh, come on! Don't tell me you're going to turn into Mute Girl again and keep it a secret! She puffed her cheeks as if she was a little girl trying to show her dissatisfaction. I couldn't help but admire how effortlessly her face moved from one expression to the next. Mute characters have grown out of fashion, you know? Besides, conversation is an excellent communication tool for us humans, so not using it is a kind of waste, don't you think? This isn't a conversation. You've just been spouting nonsense ever since- You should address me by my proper name. Haven't I just introduced myself? She chided me in a flat, threatening tone. Um, Anishima-san, everything you're saying is just nonsense. I don't need the san. I hate that kind of reserved politeness. But I just met you a few minutes ago. Which makes us complete strangers? <laughs> You're totally wrong! I mean, we're pen pals, aren't we? Pen pals? You read my letter, didn't you? Isn't that why you're here? A letter? What letter is she talking about? I quickly checked my notebook and soon remembered. And then, as soon as I did, I raised my voice in surprise. Eh? So it was you who- Yep! I'm the beautiful kidnapper who took your memories hostage! <laughs> Without showing any signs of embarrassment, but also not of putting on air, she ended her sentence with a strange little laugh. But, but why? Hey, you can't just keep asking questions. Think for yourself. Uh, um, so I guess you really wanted to keep me in Matsuda. That has nothing to do with it. Even though I did my best to think of a reason, she rejected it in one swift threatening motion. Well, whatever. I just don't feel like telling you yet. As she was speaking, Anashima picked up the notebook that was still lying on the ground under a tree, ignored the liquid it was soaked in, and shoved it into her cleavage. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't return that to you yet. This event scene can't proceed that far. Hey, 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 hey. Anashima suddenly opened her eyes wide in surprise. Ha 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 ha? She turned her head from side to side, calling out as if she was mad. It's gone! Gone, 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 gone! W what's gone? I asked timidly, confused by her sudden change. It's gone! Gone! Isn't that strange? Why is it gone? Why? She paced around the circumference of the trees, repeating her cries like a broken record. I asked what's gone! I finally decided to use a stronger tone, and then... Oh. Ah. She finally turned her face back towards me but it was an unexpected, expressionless face. Then, she replied in a voice lacking any intonation, speaking as lightly as if she was discussing trivialities. The body. The body is gone. The body that was here isn't here anymore. Huh? Oh, have you forgotten already? Honestly, even forgetfulness should have its limits. You saw that body yourself, didn't you? A new question came into my head. Wait, how did you know I'm forgetful? Have I told you? Th that doesn't matter. Anyway, there was definitely a body here before. Anashima raised her voice, brushing my question aside. Please, believe me, there was a body here minutes ago. I killed him, so I'm sure of it. 
Huh? Before I knew it, my body stiffened. You see, I came at him from behind and hanged him in one go. I did it with those very slender arms. Then, he leaked a little. Honestly, old men like him should wear diapers just in case. If they did, it would give me peace of mind even in days like this. Huh? I felt as if a spell of confusion was cast on me. And Ashima, on the other hand, went on, gesticulating enthusiastically as she spoke. <laughs> to be frank, some of it got on my skirt, so I went to the bathroom to wash it off. But it seems in the time I was gone, the body took off. It slipped away. Well, it's my fault really, getting scared from a little pee like that. That's why, as punishment, I put that pee-drenched notebook under my shirt right now. Huh? I mean, I worked so hard so I could make an example out of him. Honestly, who could have done that? Huh? Hey, you've been doing that for a while now. Are you trying to be one of those absent-minded characters that are always so popular? Huh? Or maybe you're just a dummy. It was useless. Thoughts I couldn't even form into words ran around inside my head, causing a terrible grating headache. I didn't understand a thing. Is killing a person a thing someone can confess so readily? Ah, uh, are you wondering how come I've confessed to such a thing so readily? She hit the bullseye once more. That should be obvious. I want you involved in this. Eh? A vague yet extraordinary anxiety unfolded over my entire body. M me I Involved in this? Wait a second. Why do I have to get involved in such a horrible thing? Huh? I'm asking, why do I have to get involved in such a horrible thing? Huh? Uh, I said, don't get so mad. You're ruining your absent-minded character personality. That's not it. I... In that case, let me ask you a question. Say you're making instant ramen. You put boiling water in and then wait three minutes, right? But if someone comes and asks you, how come it's three minutes? What's going to be your answer? You can't answer that, can you? My thoughts reached a state of unprecedented turmoil. Well, what are you talking about? Don't change the- I'm not changing the subject! It's the same! And Oshima counterattacked with a strong tone of voice. That's just how things are, so that's why I'm doing it. There's no further explanation. Ah, uh, but, you know, I'm not proud of it, but I am an impatient person. So I often give up before the three minutes are up. People think I have a thing for hard noodles. But it's actually because of this much deeper reason. Well, do you get it now? My cognition clattered and collapsed, and the inside of my brain completely turned into rubble. All that was left was a large number of question marks. I don't understand anything. That was the one and only answer I was certain of. Attempting to understand other people perfectly is a futile activity unless you're aiming for the Ubermensch Olympics. I know that. But nevertheless, her case was extraordinary. I shouldn't have gotten involved with her from the very beginning, after all. But it's probably not too late yet. Before I get even more involved... That's right. I should run away. That's right. I should run away. Having finally arrived at this simple answer, I promptly turned the other way, kicked powerfully at the ground, and set off dashing away from danger. Almost immediately, I found myself colliding head-on with Enoshima. How? I fell right down on my butt. It hit the ground so harshly that my entire body turned numb. When I looked up, Anishima stood on the road, blocking my head. I never even saw her move, and yet she somehow appeared behind me before I even started running. T- Teleportation? I prefer Shikuchi Jutsu. I like the pop culture vibe. I felt like it wasn't just my butt that hit the ground but rather my anything and everything. It seemed I couldn't escape her after all. I may have convinced myself I have nothing to do with it, but she will not allow that. I think you misunderstand the situation. Don't you agree? Anishima crouched down and peered into my exhausted eyes. Alarms went off everywhere inside my head. I mustn't look into her eyes. Nevertheless, I couldn't avert my gaze. I should have let you know in ahead. Your intentions are irrelevant. What's relevant is Junko Anishima's purposes. That is all. That's why even thinking about escaping from Junko Anishima is nonsense. The world itself is Junko Anishima's playground, and everyone in it is merely living in it on borrowed time. I'm not talking everything you own is mine. I'm talking 
you yourself are mine. The entire world and all mankind are for Junko Enoshima to do with as she pleases. What? It was the most evil, extraordinary, egotistical doctrine. The kind that causes you to feel sick. If she really means all that, I have to resent my own lack of luck for meeting that girl. Oh well, we should return to what we were talking about. The issue of the dead body. She stood up, recollecting herself, turned to face me, and asked a question. By the way, do you know what Hope's Peak Academy Steering Committee is? Hope's Peak Academy Steering Committee? Just to make sure, I checked my notebook, but I couldn't find mention of that phrase anywhere. It seems I honestly do not know what that is, but if she mentions that name right now, that probably means... Ah, it seems you have breached a conclusion! Ah, uh, sorry, I keep messing up my pronunciation. Let me try again. It seems you've reached a conclusion! Enoshima spread both her hands grandiosely, as if she was the master of ceremonies of an extravagant show. Bibingo! That's right! The dead body that was supposed to be here was a member of Hope's Peak Academy's steering committee. These guys are much higher ranked than the teaching staff and even the headmaster. That is, they're the geezers who hold the real power in this school. <laughs> Aren't you excited already? Growing excited all by herself, she continued. But there's no need to grieve. I mean, him getting killed here is just the way things are meant to be. Yep, it was set up since the very beginning. That's why no matter how much they try to hide that incident, it's all useless. That incident? I asked without thinking. It was a momentary response I can only call thoughtless. The moment it came out of my mouth, I was bewildered by the fact I even asked it. Oh, 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 curious are you? Of course you are. One can only listen to such a vague name like that incident so many times before curiosity takes over. Don't you agree? Saying that, Enoshima struck a pose, her hands on both sides of her waist and her chest puffed high and declared loudly, The worst, largest incident in Hope's Peak Academy's history! That is the true identity of the incident I was talking about. The moment I heard those words, I was assaulted by a sensation as if some kind of strange fever invaded the inside of my skull. What? My consciousness went number and number with the scorching heat. At the same time, I absentmindedly wrote those words in my notebook as if someone was manipulating my hand. The worst, largest incident in Hope's Peak Academy's history. Yep. Write down everything you hear. That's a good girl. Enoshima laughed in satisfaction when she saw me do so. You know, you'd make an excellent part-time worker. There's no manager out there who doesn't tell new workers on their first day to write everything they're taught. But if someone tried to order me to do something like that, I'd send them straight to hell. I'm not kidding. Straight to hell. First, I'd finish off their family, then their friends and acquaintances, and then, when they're fully immersed in despair, I'll wait until they come ask me themselves to please kill them. By the way, who are you? Eh? I looked up from my notebook in surprise, and saw that the scowl in her eyes increased considerably. Her scathing eyes were looking towards something far behind my back. I turned over at once, but could see nothing but deep black trees in the middle of the night's darkness. Nevertheless, Enoshima faced the darkness and asked again in a sullen voice, Hey, I asked you who you are. Suddenly, I saw something moving from the corner of my eyes. Then, something swayed up slowly from behind the dense foliage. Eh? A white mask appeared inside the jet black scenery. It was a human face. Its whiteness was as pure as if it was covered in white paint. Ah, I guess I've been found out. Along with the voice, a man's silhouette became apparent within the darkness. He had a long, slender body, much like a snake stretching upwards. He wore a pitch black school uniform and had pitch black hair dropping down to his shoulders, black upon black. The white face peeking out from the blackness had small, thin, lizard-like eyes carved into it. My name is Ashiki Madurai. I could hardly see his mouth move. Is that so? It's not like it really matters, but that's such a lame name. Junko on Ashima is ten billion times cooler. I took a sidelong glance at Anishima, being her usual loud self behind me. She didn't seem much affected by the situation, 
and flashed her regular overconfident smile. That is... indeed... troubling. I have much pride in my name. By the way, that is not the only thing troubling me at present. Huh. I wonder what else there could be. I was hoping to talk to you when you're alone, but... Well, if it comes to this, I guess I have no choice. Madurai took something out of his pocket while he was murmuring. It looked like a photo. He moved his lizard-like eyes back and forth between us and the photo. I see. So you're Junko and Ashima. And what is your business with Junko and Ashima? She answered without even blinking. I have heard a certain rumor. Was it about how Junko and Ashima is transcendently, hopelessly beautiful? There's that, I guess, but... Madurai paused for a second, and then continued in a completely different tone of voice. I also heard that Junko and Ashima was involved in that incident. And that's what you want to talk about? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's impossible! And Ashima wasn't even slightly unnerved, nor did she lose her smile. That's not something a small fry like you has any right to talk about. Know your place. I thought you'd say that. Well, I guess I won't get what I want that easily. And what are you going to do about it? Are you going to force it out violently? Are you an old-fashioned kind of guy? That kind of trite development should stay inside V-Cinema films. Speaking of being old-fashioned, I'm not the type of guy who'd go easy on you just because you're a woman. I hope that's not what you're counting on. Madurai's chorus of glare shot through us. And Ashima and Madurai glared at each other in a way that almost made the ground itself shake. But this has nothing to do with me, does it? This is an issue between that boy who called himself Ashiki Madurai and that girl who called herself Junko and Ashima. I'm not involved at all, so it's okay for my body to stop shaking with fear now, right? Well then. I hope you two are ready, because... Wait a second! I raised my shaky voice. Both Enoshima and Madurai turned their eyes towards me at the same time. Uh... Uh... Um... It's strange that you said you two just now. After all, you only have business with... I can't have one of you running away. Anyone involved with Junko Enoshima is likely to have something to do with the incident themselves said Madurai, licking his lips. Well, if you need someone to blame, blame yourself for getting involved with Junko and Ashima. Furthermore, I've been hearing nothing but complaints. But don't you think this is a pain for me too? I came prepared for one and now I have to deal with two. That's twice the labor. But you don't see me complaining, so why don't you just keep it to yourself? W what That was some messed up reasoning. No. It wasn't even close to being reasoning at all. It was just overwhelmingly egotistical. But, I guess still not as egotistical as she was. Hmm, I see, I see. You're brimming with deadly motivation, aren't you? But, you see, this girl here is overflowing with deadliness, said Enoshima, stroking my head. Wait, what girl is she talking about? Hey, don't look so stupefied. I'm leaving the rest to you. Huh? Leaving the rest of what to who? Ah, your face looks just like a fur seal's. But that doesn't matter. Go ahead and fight him already. That's your role here, you know. M me Fighting? W w what are you talking about? I screamed, brushing her hand off the top of my head. Oh, it's fine. You're a girl who can do anything when you want to. You can even kill when you want to, you know. Hey, enough with that kind of talk. Killing. That's not a word fit for healthy high school girls. Madurai's face became distorted with a sarcastic smile. Oh, not a fan of mutual killing? And Ashima scoffed. Huh, you're not prepared at all. I'm a little disappointed. That's just natural. What use are you to me, Dad? There are many things I seek answers to, after all. At the very least, I have to keep your mouths working. Madurai narrowed his lizard eyes even more and repeated, emphasizing his words. But just the mouths. Then, 
His slender body swayed like the flame of a candle and started moving slowly towards us. Hmm, I guess he really is eager. Of course I am. I've been waiting for this chance ever since the incident. Matarai pushed out a tightly gripped fist in front of his chest. It was rugged like a turban snail and didn't match his snake-like body at all. Should someone be hit with that fist, the face would probably cave in, just like in comic books. What are we gonna do? Tears started streaming from my eyes. I guess we have no choice after all, Anishima whispered in a low, stiff tone. Then, she suddenly changed back to a regular, clear, cheerful voice. Go ahead! Wait! <laughs> Don't worry, you're gonna be just fine. Anishima gripped my shoulders like a bully would. I'm gonna help you, of course. We'll have you display the full extent of your talent in no time. Huh? Talent? My talent? Hey, hey, when you're in trouble, look in your notebook, remember? Ah, uh, yeah. I turned my eyes down to my notebook following Enoshima's urges, and then... Smash! Whoosh! Crack! Whoop! Swish! ta 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 ta, -ta. Sound effects that should belong in a cartoon reverberated through the area. I looked back up in a conditioned reflex, and... Eh? Enoshima, who was just behind me a second ago, was now a few meters ahead, exchanging violent blows in a fierce battle with Madurai. Flash! Subaba! da 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 Madurai used his long limbs like whips as he attacked. His opponent, fashion girl Anishima, was standing her ground. Where the heck did this fighting action come from? Hey, don't just stand there looking like a pig in shock! Anishima yelled at me while performing magnificent tripping techniques as if she was a professional gymnast. Write everything down in your notebook! Right then, she delivered a perfect kick, sending Madurai down into the lawn with a short grunt. Nevertheless, he turned his long body like a spinning top and recovered from his fall still spinning, as if he was breakdancing. Whoops! And Nishima jumped and dodged, and Madurai took advantage of the opening to rise back up. Then, without waiting a single second, he delivered a straight right. He was clearly too far away for the strike to hit, but his bizarre long arms seemed to ignore the distance. Nevertheless, Anishima dodged his flying fist, and in the same movement, stepped up and thrust the tip of her right foot into his abdomen. <laughs> a groan left Madurai's mouth. The two finally stopped moving. Oh, it worked! The Crescent Moon Kick! I wanted to try it ever since I read about it in a magazine. Anishima didn't pursue the crouched Madurai. Instead, boasted while grinning broadly. By the way, what even caused this school battle to begin? Am I just forgetting again, or was it just completely incoherent? Hey! I told you not to just stand there looking bewildered! I was still frozen in place, and Enoshima's irritated voice washed over me. Write everything down in your notebook! What do you think I'm working so hard for? Suddenly, her face flew away. A high kick as swift as a whip came at her from behind, sending her thin body flying like a scrap of paper. Ah! I raised my voice instinctively, and turned my eyes to where her body was headed. Ah! <sighs> that was almost dangerous! She was posed on her knees, but then stood up as if nothing had happened. There was no visible damage except for a red mark on her left arm. It seemed she tried to use that arm to guard against Madurai's kick. I wasn't the only one who thought such a blow should have broken her thin arms, though. I could see signs of impatience on Madurai's scowling face. Huh. Nervous cause I'm too strong? Starting to doubt yourself? That's right. I'm the ultimate weapon fashion girl who hasn't lost in over 300 fights. Shut up. Brushing away her words in anger, Madurai rushed at her once more. Soon, the battle resumed in full force. They both used their right hands, right feet, left hands, left feet, and then their full bodies in a hectic exchange of blows. I simply stood watching, unable to move. Only my hand moved, to write everything down earnestly in my notebook. And Oshima let out a series of exaggerated high kicks as though in response to the one that sent her flying before, but Madurai just twisted his mouth into a grin. He carefully avoided the kicks, and then, with perfect timing, lowered his posture and sprang into a tackle. His long hands stretched forward and were trying to take hold of Enoshima's waist, but... Enoshima's knee sprung up aiming directly for Madurai's jaw. 
Madurai managed to turn away from his tackling target at the last second and avoided Anishima's knee by mere millimeters. Nevertheless, he lost his balance and thrust his right hand towards the ground. As soon as he did, Anishima cried, Hiya! in a silly voice and delivered a spinning kick at the right half of his body, which had become an open target. Madurai guarded with his left hand in panic, but he didn't make it in time. His right temple was hit with Anishima's intense kick. His slender body flew down towards the ground, swaying back and forth. Ah, that was an easy win! Easier than going dancing! Anishima laughed loudly. I guess he was all boasty without much to show for it. He should try going back and relearning the basics. That was really no trouble at all. She continued to cackle, and then took out a hand mirror from an inside pocket and started resetting her messy hair. Surprisingly, despite the fierce battle she just participated in, she wasn't even out of breath. I rushed over to her side and started cheering. Th thank God! Thank God! For a second there I was really worried! Anishima's expression changed in an instant. Huh? She gave me the ultimate despising look. I think you're misunderstanding the situation. You don't think this is settled yet, do you? I mean, that would be an Armageddon-level misunderstanding. Eh? Suddenly, I caught a shape slowly rising up from the corner of my eye. It was Madurai. Uh, how? It's obvious, isn't it? That kind of kick shouldn't have sent him flying as grandiosely as he did. He just did what I did before. He let himself fly. You know? In order to reduce damage. Well, it's all because I went a little easy on him. You know, he wouldn't have survived otherwise. Scree! I heard the unpleasant sound of grinding metal. It came from Madurai's teeth, which were grinding together so much it almost seemed sparks were going to come out of them. He, he's mad, isn't he? I, I think he's mad. My face was fixed on Madurai as I turned my nervous voice towards Anishima, who stood hidden behind me. It's fine. It's impossible for someone like you to be taken down by someone on his level. Probably. At least be definitive about it. I was just about to turn and face her when... Never take your eyes off. Anishima commanded with a sharp voice. Never take your eyes off the prey. That's the basics of the basics. P prey But I'm the one who's prey here, aren't I? Madurai kept grinding his teeth, advancing slowly towards us. I was shaking in fear like a frightened rabbit in front of a bloodthirsty poisonous serpent. There was nothing I could do but turn to rely on Anishima once more. What? Madurai suddenly opened his eyes wide in surprise. When did she... When did she... What? A bad feeling came over my entire body, and I turned around in fear to look right behind me. Um, what was it she called that? I went over to my notebook, and soon remembered. Right, right. Shukutsu Jutsu, huh? There was no one behind me anymore. In no time at all, no sign that Enoshima was ever there remained. It seems you've been abandoned. I heard a man's voice from behind me. I turned around once more. Madurai was suddenly standing right before my eyes, looking down at me with vicious eyes. But there is no need to resent anyone. I shall settle things properly with her later. It's just the order that changed. Having been handed what sounded like a death sentence, I came to realize the fundamental error that occupied my thoughts until that moment. I was an idiot for thinking I could rely on Anishima. But this is no time for complaints. I have to do something. Then, as my faltering eyes turned down to my notebook, I heard Madurai's voice from above. Huh. You must be really confident if you're reading a notebook at a time like this. Uh, um, excuse me. I couldn't even bring my head up again. I couldn't even grasp the content of what I was reading, but I still flipped through the pages. I couldn't find a breakthrough solution to my problems, but I did my best to come up with an excuse that gave me some time. Wait it one second. You said you were investigating the worst, largest incident in Hope's Peak Academy's history, didn't you? In that case, I won't be much help to you at all. I mean, I know absolutely nothing about that. How did you know that then? 
Madurai's voice turned to ice and made me shiver even more. N know what? All I said before was that I was looking into that incident. Nevertheless, you seem to know I was talking about the worst, largest incident in Hope's Peak Academy's history. I looked up. The sharpness in Madurai's eyes seemed to grow tenfold. My first thought was to escape those eyes, so I looked down at my notebook again. Um, you see, that's... I just heard that name recently by accident. Yes, that's definitely what happened. There are not many people in this academy who even know about that incident or its title. The fact that you two spoke about it, it seems my suspicions were exactly right. I didn't even need to look anymore. I could imagine Madurai's lizard eyes twisting towards me in laughter. Shivers went down my spine. My arms and legs stiffened. I couldn't move at all. It's over. I can't be sure about it, but this is probably the first time in my life I was conscious of my own mortality. Of course, at times like this, there's just one thing that comes to my empty head. Matsuda. Yes, my beloved Matsuda. But of course, the memories don't come flashing inside my head like a revolving lantern. All I can remember is my feelings towards him. Therefore, I whispered his name again and again inside my heart. I had to remember. Matsuda, 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 Matsuda. Huh? Um, let's try that again. Matsuda, 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 Matsuda. Huh? That's strange. Something isn't right. I can't remember? Suddenly, my entire body was a buzz. I was assaulted by an unprecedented sense of fear and loneliness when I realized I couldn't remember Matsuda. Is this what loss feels like? It was a hellish feeling like I never felt before. A terrible feeling, as if parts of my body were bitten off by evil demons. What is it? Your face is terribly pale. Eh? The second I looked back up at Madurai, I understood what was happening. The fear the man in front of my eyes cast over me took control over all my emotions. That's why I couldn't remember my feelings for Matsuda. Your face looks like the face of someone who is about to be attacked. He cackled at his own unfunny joke. Matsuda, Matsuda. Even swallowed by fear, I continued whispering his name inside my heart. My emotions did not respond. Nevertheless, I continued to whisper frantically. It was almost like a prayer. I want to see Matsuda's face. I want to hear Matsuda's voice. I want to smell Matsuda. I want to touch Matsuda. I want to meet Matsuda. I want to meet Matsuda. I want to meet Matsuda. Suddenly, something changed. My heart beat loudly, and my blood, which had until now been circulating nowhere in particular, began to flow into my limbs again. A surprising sense of heat melted the fear that was keeping my body frozen. I want to meet Matsuda. I repeated the mantra several more times, and soon completely forgot the fear that was controlling my feelings. I want to meet Matsuda, I want to meet Matsuda, I want to meet Matsuda! I want to meet Matsuda. Hmm? Madurai perceived the change in me and put some distance between us immediately. It seems that despite his looks, he was a cautious man, and that I reclaimed my composure enough to make that analysis. With that newfound composure, I turned back to read my notebook once again, from the beginning. All of a sudden, my eyes stopped on the very first page. There was an explanation regarding my talent written there. It's strange that I never noticed it until now. It must be the power of love Matsuda granted me. I'm going to meet Matsuda, I'm going to meet Matsuda, I'm going to meet Matsuda! It was no longer just my heart's desire. It was now my clear goal, birthing a rekindled fever inside me. Please step away, I declared to Madurai, raising my head from the notebook. I'm going to meet Matsuda. Who the hell is that? Never mind that. What made you come back to life so suddenly? Love, of course, I yelled in triumph. My power of love for Matsuda, I yelled unbashedly. I agree that love is not something to be trifled with. It urges people to take unimaginable actions and sometimes drives them to madness, although I'm not sure that's what's happening here. In any case, don't stand in my way, 
I scowled fiercely at Madurai. Or maybe it's desperation that's driving you now. That would be a bother. You can never know what desperate people are going to do. It doesn't matter if they're weak or strong. It's always a bother. Shut up and move already. You're truly a strange woman. He lowered his center of weight and crouched into a low posture. He must be attempting to preempt any possible attack, but it has nothing to do with me. Something like that cannot hope to extinguish the red flame burning inside me. I'm gonna meet Matsuda. I'm gonna meet Matsuda. I'm gonna meet Matsuda. I defensively stepped forward in determination, my hands still holding the open notebook. In reaction, Madurai lowered his center of gravity even more and prepared a clenched fist next to his lower back. He was ready for war. Nevertheless, it didn't seem like he was going to make the first move. He was extremely alert. I was right. He really does have a cautious personality. But, no, because of that. I stopped right there and yelled one more declaration. Checkmate, Ashiki Madurai! What the hell? That's a lame catchphrase. Checkmate, Ashiki Madurai! I couldn't think of any other catchphrase, so I repeated the same one again. Like a wild animal about to swoop down on its prey, I slowly lowered my center of gravity. I concentrated my entire body's strength into my two legs, and as soon as it was all accumulated, I released it all at once. I kicked the ground violently using every bit of stored energy, and started running as if my body erupted from an explosion, away from Madurai, who was still on the alert. H hey! I heard Madurai's bewildered voice far behind me. It seemed he was not prepared for this development at all. Running, I opened my notebook to its first page again and checked the explanation about my talent one more time. That's right, this is my talent, my one and only way to come out of this situation winning. I don't remember it though, so it still doesn't feel quite real. After a very short while, I could hear running footsteps chasing me. I decided to put my predictions to the test. What is the man chasing me thinking right now? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he's thinking something like, Now that's truly a strange woman.